everyone knows. Diabetes is caused by a shortage of insulin. Not enough insulin leaves you unable to move sugars out of the blood into the cells. The resulting elevated sugar levels are trouble. So, to fix the problem, you need more insulin. More insulin? <laughs> it's relative. In type 1 diabetes, you're genuinely deficient. Your immune system woke up one morning, took a look at the beta cells in your pancreas and said, Out, damn spot, out! It mounted a systematic attack on the beta cells, destroying them. So there is no insulin. You need some. But in type 2 diabetes, that's not the story. You're insulin resistant. This means you've got more than enough insulin floating through the pipes. The trouble is, the insulin has nowhere to go. The deficiency is not because of an absence of insulin. The insulin that is present just doesn't get the job done. Your problem is excess insulin, not too little. So why do we try to fix type 2 diabetes by sending in more insulin? Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we investigate the pros and cons of more insulin in type 2 diabetes. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Well, the reason we're sending in more insulin is because Insulin can bring down sugar levels, and sugar is a killer. High sugar levels kill, literally. Blood vessels are particularly vulnerable. Damaged blood vessels cause many of the problems associated with type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, blindness, kidney failure, neuropathy, etc. So bringing down sugar levels is the imperative. But should it be done by raising insulin levels? Probably not. Insulin is not an innocent bystander. It's a player. This is what a group of researchers found when they took normal mice and fed them a normal diet and gave them excess insulin, 32 times more than normal. If that sounds like an awful lot, it is and it isn't. Normal fasting insulin levels should be below 10, but levels over 100 are often found in people suffering from hyperinsulinemia. The mice were given a daily injection of glargine for eight weeks. Glargine is a version of insulin that is used in insulin therapy. It's classified as a long-acting insulin. The team observed what happened. Fasting glucose levels, food intake, and weight were checked on a weekly basis. But the real monitoring took place at the end of the eight weeks, when the animals were sacrificed. The blood and tissue samples were then analyzed for all sorts of things. First things first, the animals 
were more insulin resistant. This really shouldn't come as a big surprise. The more nagging that happens, the less listening happens. The surprises came in what else happened. First off, the mice got fatter. Not so much on the outside, but on the inside. And interestingly enough, they appeared to be actually eating a little less. Their fasting blood sugar levels started to rise. At the eight-week mark, the difference was significant. That means it was big enough to be considered a real difference, not something that was just happening by chance. The islets of the pancreas began disappearing. There were less of them, and they had shrunk. <laughs> Ouch! To all intents and purposes, the mice had developed type 2 diabetes. Insulin caused the problem, not food. Remember, these little guys were eating ordinary mouse chow. They were not pigging out on the mouse equivalent of McDonald's hamburgers. The cure <laughs> is the cause of disease. Reigning in insulin should be a priority. It makes you fat and puts you at risk of type 2 diabetes. Candy flossing will help. Download our free willpower report to learn how and begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry? so you optimize your health and the health of your family, visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who is at risk of diabetes Share this video with them so they realize the battle is against hyperinsulinemia. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.